hard can this be? I mean, heck, the answer is either true or false. <laughs> So much of computing is based on whether or not to execute a certain section of code. For example, let's say that we have secured or protected things on a website. Are we going to let anybody access those? No, they need to be there only if they have entered a valid username and a valid password. Yeah, but how important really is that? Maybe we could allow them in to enter if they've entered a valid username or a valid password, right? No, I don't think so. That conjunction is really important. Um, what if I need to find a store nearest me? Well, I could enter either a zip code or a city and state, right? And so in that case, an or might be all right. So all of these decisions are based on logic that gives you a yes or no, a true or false, an okay or not okay result, right? And an introduction to that is really what we're going to be talking about in this lesson. So we're going to start off with something pretty simple. This is just called negation. Now, sometimes you hear this referred to as not, right? And so, and in fact, what's interesting is that with numbers, the negative of a number is pretty obvious. If I gave you five, then the negative of that is negative five, right? Well, in the case of logic, we really only have two values, right? True or false. So the negative or, and negative is not the right word, but the negation of a true is a false, right? And the negation of a false is the other value, the true. And so what I've got is that if P is a declarative statement, right? A proposition. Then the negation of P is the compound statement not P. Okay? Now there are a number of ways that this is denoted. Um, being an electrical engineer, the way that I'm used to seeing it is to put a bar over the item that we are negating. Now, I like the bar because the bar serves not only to show that we're negating P, we're negating what's under it, but if I'm actually, I can actually put that bar across a compound statement and that compound statement, then the bar acts as parentheses and everything under that, under that bar gets determined whether it's true or false before we apply the bar. But in a lot of the math literature, you'll see like this bar, this bar immediately before the P, or maybe a tilde before the P, or maybe an exclamation point before the P, all of which are valid. We're probably going to stick with this bar before the P, as that's a lot of what you see in the mathematical literature. Now, examples that you might see are things like, there are five people in this room. That is a declarative statement. It is either true or false. Turns out it's false because I'm down here by myself. But what is the negation, the not? There are not five people in this room. Now that is true. We've negated it. It's true. Um, going back to the web, the web example, the user is logged in. What's the negation of the user is logged in? The user is not logged in. Now we talked about in the previous lesson this idea of truth tables. And remember on the left hand side of the truth table we've got, a co we've got columns that represent all the, all the propositions that are being brought together in order to create a compound statement. And so in the case of P we only have a negation. We only have a single item, a single proposition that we're negating here. So there's that one single proposition P it can either be false or it can be true. Now the compound statement is not P. And so after you apply the not to P, it's going to flip it. It's going to come up with the other value. So we've got false, not false is true, not true is false. And so there's our truth table for whatever values of P we've got. That is the result of the compound statement, not P. Now the rest of these logical operations are going to take two or more of the propositions and combine them together. The first one is the conjunction. Now you may have heard this as simply and. 
And whenever you're talking about putting together two propositions with an and, remember they both have to be true for the whole compound sentence to be true. For example, let's think of we're talking about whether to, deter, whether to turn on an air conditioner or not. We've got maybe the room is occupied and the temperature in the room is above 75 degrees. Both of those need to be true before we say, oh, okay, we're going to turn on the air conditioner. Let me go ahead and try and give you the definition before I start trying to confuse you with examples. If P and Q are declarative statements, then the conjunction of P and Q is the compound statement P and Q. All right. Now let's talk about the way it's denoted. Now, once again, like the negation, there's a couple of ways you might see this thing being denoted. For example, in a lot of electronics, you may see the dot used to denote the and. But in this, which is, we're trying to stick with more mathematical representations, you'll see a caret. And so you'll have P and Q. That'll be the way you denote it. Now let's talk about the truth table. The truth table, this time, the compound statement has two propositions, P Q. And P and Q have, since there are two of them, four possible combinations of true and false. Now remember, we've got two propositions here, so two to the two, that gives us four possible combinations of trues and false. So they can both be false, P can be false and Q can be true, P can be true, Q can be false, or they can both be true. Now, when it comes to the operation of the and or the conjunction, what you've got is the only way that our whole statement can be true is if both of the propositions or all the propositions that are being combined with this and are true. And so in our last row of our truth table, the true and true gives us true. That's the only time you're going to see a true. Otherwise, you're going to always get a false for that particular system if you, or that particular compound statement. If the room is occupied but the temperature is not uh, greater than 75, we don't turn on the air conditioner. If the room is not occupied but the temperature is above 75 degrees, we still don't turn on the air conditioner. That sort of thing. Um, if we're talking about the web, you can look at this idea of the username and password, right? If the user has entered a valid username and has entered a password associated, the valid password associated with that username, we let them access the material, all right? Now let's try another one. This one we're going to do is called the inclusive disjunction. Now the inclusive disjunction is probably more familiar to you as the or. Um, and so what we've got here is this idea that the that either can be true. And so if P and Q are declarative statements, then the inclusive disjunction of P and Q is the compound statement P or Q. In this case, when you're looking at how they're denoted, um, in, in electronics, sometimes you'll see the plus sign used to denote the or. But in this case, whenever we're sticking with the mathematical uh, expressions, we're looking at a small v, at a little v. All right. Now, this little v is, is red or. And if we're going to look at the truth table for this, what you've got is if either of these is true. For example, let's say that P is I work hard at my job in order to make money, right? Um, what little of it there is. Q maybe is I won the lottery. So I work hard at my job, I won the lottery. And maybe I need to look at whether or not I'm, I'm, I've got enough money to live, right? 
And so either I work hard at my job or I won the lottery. Now it is possible that I work hard at my job and I won the lottery. In that case, we also are going to say that we're successful, right? And so with this or, we've got the only time that the output of that statement is going to be a false is if both of them are false, all right? The thing I like to point out is that the conjunction, the and, has one unique case in the truth table, and that's where everything is true makes it true. Well, the inclusive disjunction, the or, has a unique case too. Where everything is false, it outputs a false, or its result is a false. Otherwise, if either or both is true, either or both of the propositions being ORed together are true, then the, then the, then the compound statement is going to be true too. Um, and going back to that example of the, the you know, where's the low, uh, nearest store to me? What you need in order to compute that is either you need to know what the user's zip code is or you need to know the city and state. Either one of those will give us the ability to come up with the nearest store to them. I'm really cheating here by not erasing the whole board and just filling in the blanks. Sorry about that if you're taking notes. Next we have the exclusive disjunction, sometimes called the exclusive or or the X or. Now what we're going to say is if P and Q are declarative statements, then the exclusive disjunction of P and Q is the compound statement P or Q but not both. All right. And the way it's denoted is, well, there's a couple of ways. And, and believe it or not, we're kind of going to shift to uh, the, possibly the more engineering term. We've got P with a plus sign with a circle around it. That represents the exclusive OR, or the exclusive disjunction. Another way I've seen it represented, though, is using exactly the same symbol you would use with the inclusive OR, except you put a little line under the little V, all right? Now, how does this work? Well, when you look at the exclusive uh, disjunction, what you're looking at is exactly the same as the inclusive, except it excludes the case where they're both true. In other words, either or, not both. All right. In fact, whenever you're talking about um, this in, in English, when you're, when you're saying the sentence out, um, that term, either or, pretty much identifies when you're looking at an exclusive disjunction. Uh, for example, Either he does his own laundry or he asks his mother to do it. If he asks his mother to do it, he ain't doing it himself, is he? So that idea of either or is really what you're looking at when you're talking about an exclusive or. Another one is it's either daytime or it's nighttime. It's not both at the same time. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to show you about the exclusive or or the exclusive disjunction because it's incredibly important. Number one, it is a great tool to identify if something is not equal. So, for example, let's say that we're, we're receiving two streams of information and they need to be exactly the same. And so what you do is you use the exclusive disjunction to say, okay, they're both false, it's still good. They're both true, it's still good. But I want to indicate with this signal that one is not equal to the other. So if I've got one stream that's saying false, the other stream that's saying true, or vice versa, I'm going to output from the exclusive disjunction, there's a difference here. True, yes, there is a difference. The other thing that I want you to see is that the exclusive disjunction can actually be represented with a compound function or a compound statement. I can say either P and not Q or not P and Q. Now, we haven't really gotten to evaluating these statements, but, but if we just simply say this out loud, what I'm saying is I'm going to, the statement is going to be true if P is true and Q is not true, or, and that's P is true and Q is not true, or P is not true and Q is true. P is false, Q is true. And those, 
So the only time I'm going to output trues is for that case. So it actually turns out that the exclusive disjunction is in itself a compound statement. Still holding together to this idea that I can keep using this format here. Let's try it again. Implication. All right, implication, sometimes referred to as a conditional statement. If, then, right? And you all have heard this before. For example, as children, you may have had a parent say, if you clean your plate, then you'll get dessert, right? So we're all used to this, this idea of a condition being satisfied leads to another, uh, to, to, a, to a result, all right? So if P and Q are declarative statements, then the implication of P and Q is the compound statement if P then Q. All right. And it is denoted with an arrow going from the P to the Q. So we've got P implies or yeah, P implies or P uh, is an implication for Q. All right. Now, <laughs> this may not seem like something that's a truth table, but what you're looking at is there is only one condition when this is false. Imagine that idea with the if you clean your plate, then you'll get dessert. What is the one time when your parent did not did not honor that statement? Well, if you cleared your plate, but you didn't get dessert. Get that? So they did not honor. It was a false statement that they said if you cleared your plate, but you didn't get dessert. So if what you did, or if the if if the original statement P was true, but you didn't get the result, false, this is false, all right? That's the one time it's false. Turns out all of these other cases are true. For example, if you didn't clear your plate, you didn't get dessert, that meant that it was true, right? If you didn't clear your plate, but they gave you dessert anyway out of the kindness of their heart, that does not mean that the declarative statement was not true. It just means that there was another case that didn't happen. If you clear your plate, then you'll get your dessert. Simply means that if, if that one first one is honored, we'll honor the second one. If the first, first one's not honored, it is still possible that that second one could be true. So a false true also could give you a true. And then, of course, if you clear your plate and you got dessert, everybody was happy and that was true. And let's see if I can't keep going all the way to the end with this. And we've got our last one now. This one is if and only if. This is really about logical equality. All right. And what we're saying is, is if P is true, then Q is true, but also Q being true implies that P is true. So it's really like we've got implications going both directions, which we'll see result is, is going to show us how it's denoted. So if P and Q are declarative statements, then the, and I'm going to write, this is not going to say, sound very uh, graceful, but the if and only if, and sometimes that is abbreviated IFF, so I don't think I have room here but we'll try IFF, so sometimes it's, it's uh, denoted IFF, of the statement P and Q is the statement P if and only if Q, all right? Now it is denoted, like I said, with arrows going both ways, really, right? So we've got P implies Q, but Q also implies P. So P if and only if Q. Now in this case, what we've got is if, if P is false, then, then Q is false, that is true. If P is true, then Q is true, that is true. But if P is false, then Q can't be true, so that's false. And if P is true, then Q must be true, so that is also false. So you'll see that what this is, is really showing us where there's equality, saying, yep, everything is true, on either either both are true or both are false and really this p 
if and only if Q, it really looks like the knot of P exclusive ORed with Q, doesn't it? Because this, the exclusive OR or the exclusive disjunction had trues whenever P and Q were different, falses when P and Q were the same. All right. Now, in our next lesson, we're going to derive a truth table from a compound propositional statement. Now, we've been covering compound propositional statements here, but not to the level that we're going to do in the next lesson.